so when you're thinking about all these contingencies, what is the one that is most concerning to you? Like what's the one, um, that if you have to prioritize <laughs> all the things that could happen when you're alone in the middle of the yeah. Atlantic in a <laughs> rowboat, yeah. um, what, what would you prioritize your, your list of, uh, of concerns? What's at the top well, of that list? It, it's a funny question to follow on with, because actually I've just spoken about, um, probably my biggest concern and that's been run over. Ah, it's actually yes. being hit by commercial shipping. Yeah. So um, I, I will be aiming to get myself into, to the best of my ability, the Gulf Stream. Okay. So the Gulf Stream is, it's like a, a conveyor belt of slightly warmer water. It, it's to do with the spinning of the earth. Don't ask me to explain it. I oh, don't yeah. understand the, the principles behind it. But, you know, very clever people will be able to explain it. But basically there's, there's a band of warm water that comes up the east coast of the U.S. and it bends around New York, Newfoundland, and then it makes its way over east. And I'll be doing my best to get into that um, because that body of warm water is going to be moving. It's actually really weak at the minute. I've been reading newspaper articles because people are linking the, the breakdown of the Gulf Stream to climate change. So I've been reading these articles. So it's, it's quite weak. But I could well get like one or two knots, maybe three knots of push from that conveyor belt of warm water. Got it. So I, now when I can only row at two knots, uh, that's huge. That's doubling right. my boat speed. So clearly that's where I want to be. But the issue comes from the fact that, you know, the commercial ships, they all want to be in that Gulf Stream as well because uh, that's diesel and time and, you know, that's money. So I will always be in or close to shipping lanes. Uh, and I, it's... I, there's actually uh, an ex Royal Marine who was run down on an ocean road um, by a, a fishing trawler. Thankfully, they stopped, and turned around, and picked him up. Oh, okay, but they were just plowed down in the middle of the night. Yeah, that's um, a that's a big so, danger. I know my uh, my dad sailed to yeah. Hawaii back in the '60s with a crew of not very many, mm. and they had to be up, you know, all night you had on watch and all that thing. And that's what a lot of what you're looking mm. for is these other ships because back yeah. then in the 60s you know you didn't have any of these gps's and everything else <laughs> so you were just looking yeah. and in the middle of the night when it's pitch black out there with cloud cover yeah. you know it's hard to to see some of these things yeah. coming and i remember the story he told me yeah. it was like looking up once and being under like i guess what we'd consider like a class three type vessel you know with like you know kind of curves over and looks up and doesn't see the sky but sees this huge tanker like the part of the tanker you know mm. the, the deck up there above them and so they just missed getting hit by this huge class three tanker in the middle yeah. of the pacific